What's up guys, welcome to the It's Not That Deep podcast, I'm your host Deepak Sharma. Uh, today I sit down with a good friend of mine, Nashad Syed. Uh, we talk about all things social media, branding, marketing, and also the power of the mind and the power of visualization. I hope you enjoy. What's up, brother? Thanks for joining me today. Oh, my What's going man. On? Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Anytime. It's mm-hmm. sick. Uh, finally, get started with this podcast. I've been talking about it for way too long. You know what? It doesn't even feel that long. You've uh, <laughs> literally made it happen in like less than a month, if you ask me. So, uh, I mean, you know, uh, we've the idea has been brewing for a long time. Uh, a lot of people have been hyping me up on it, but you know. It just it just took a little time to think about how I want to do the format, mm-hmm. getting the equipment together, and like honestly, just getting the balls to just do it. Um, it's so common to just like want to do something, and let your doubts and insecurities kind of hold you back. Um, there, there's many things in life like that where you know you're just like, ah, yeah, I'd be sick if I could do this one thing, but this that and the other excuse right you know what at the end of the day i'm uh i didn't know how i felt about you doing podcasts but at the end of the day i was happy that you were doing something that was a little bit different from what most people would go for it was uh it's definitely different and even me coming up to this point today i was actually nervous coming here because honestly i've never been on a mic before i never heard my own voice before isn't it weird? It is. It is. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it is. it's a little weird hearing your own voice, especially exactly. with that with the headphones on, because you hear it in like real time. Mm-hmm. Um, none of us are really used to our own voice, mm-hmm. because how we sound to ourselves mm-hmm. is very different than what we sound like when I like I, when we're recorded, right? And like that's not me. Mm-hmm. Who's that? Yeah, yep. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but you know, when you talk about being nervous coming here. Bro, I've been nervous this whole time. Just like, ah, man, like, how's it going to go? Uh, you know, what if I, I don't know what to talk about? Mm-hmm. What if, you know, like this goes wrong, that goes wrong? Like, you just think of all the negative things that could go wrong. But you don't think like, wait, what if this turns out like great? Yeah. What if it's actually a really fun time and I get to learn something and, you know, maybe you learn something from mm-hmm. me. Um, Honestly, the the best part about this is... I think we're all gaining experience from this. Uh, this is definitely something foreign to me. So I'm definitely taking a lot from this. I hope you take something valuable from this too. It's all an experience. So, you know, I'm uh, actually still excited to be here. And uh, maybe I could provide some value to you. Maybe well, for to sure, others. Man. And for sure, man. You're Mr. Marketing Guru. You know, <laughs> uh, you know everything about, um, you know, social media. Uh, you know everything about branding and how to make um, various products and um, services and platforms uh, using the platforms in like the right way. You know, it's kind of a it's kind of a new art if you think about it, because not many people are really taught. Like, we all know how to use Instagram and Facebook and you know posting a tweet. But you don't really know how to use it in a way, you know, to actually communicate well with your followers Mm -hmm. or customers. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like uh, it is very new. Yes, it's been out for quite some time now, but people are just starting to learn about how to leverage social media, how to leverage things like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Google, et cetera, et cetera. And uh I think it's time, you know, people start learning how to use some of these techniques because it could help create whether it's for your business, whether it's for your brand, uh, or if you're just trying to send a message, you know, like you can really leverage it and it's going to work in a way where you could do things that you, you can reach massive amounts of people. And, you know, it's not like before where you're spending an abundant amount of money and resources doing things old traditional methods like, oh yeah i need a billboard yeah like yeah like a radio yeah. ad 
Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, the barriers of entry are definitely a lot lower now. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, at this time, I feel like it's almost like never been a better time to be a creator or have a business mm -hmm. or you know be actually promoting some kind of um, brand for yourself because you have so many options. But don't you feel like there's almost too much competition at the same time? Honestly, like. Uh I feel at the end of the day, if you're uh, if you're providing good, valuable content in whatever field you're in, whether it's podcasts, whether you're a personal trainer, whether it's music, whether you're a pharmacist, a doctor, a dentist, whatever, you're providing good, valuable, you know, content for your niche. I think uh, you'll succeed. Right. I think you always have to give more value than you ex expect back in return, but you always. Uh, you always win at the end if you provide more value. So you talk a, a lot about give, uh, providing value, mm -hmm. giving value. Let's say I'm a personal trainer, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I've built a bit of a following and, and I'm posting content, uh, doing lunges and squats mm -hmm. and stuff. How do, I, how do I leverage that into actually, you know, going from follower to client? Someone's actually going to pay me for my services. Okay. Uh, so... I'll kind of give you like a basic understanding of how I would kind of do things. Okay. So anytime I'm working with, whether it's a friend, a client, customer, a family member, I try to look at things from their side of uh, their business. I try to look at things of how are they going to reach their audience and provide the most amount of value. So if I was a personal trainer, for instance, if I was using things like Instagram, I would post a lot of videos showing how to use proper form mm -hmm. and i'd actually provide the most amount of values on how to hit certain angles of muscles and and using certain techniques maybe i have an injury or mm -hmm. something like that and i know how to you know work out a certain muscle without you know making the injury worse i would provide way more uh way more value and expect less in return at the end of the day uh, i remember there was a point where i actually hurt my back and it was pretty severe. And I started watching videos all over YouTube and stuff like that. And they were showing ways on how to correct your posture. But because of the type of person I am, it looked too complicated. Even though it might have been an easy fix. Right. It looked too complicated for me to do where I still went out and got a chiropractor to come fix me up. Uh -huh. And that's why I still believe that no matter what, at the end of the day, if you're still providing a lot of value, they're like, you know what? This person really knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason I'm going to hire him right. or pay for their services. And they want to, like, you mentioned that they people also want to see, like, proof that you have been doing it. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, you don't want to go to a page and see, hey, this guy's been doing it for 10 minutes. Like, what do you, mm -hmm. who is this guy? Why would I yeah, hire yeah. this guy? They want to see a proper timeline of content. Like, Honestly, you've if been you, providing this. If you genuinely care about your customers, uh, that kind of means you genuinely care about your business. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you honestly care about your business growing, you got to do things that are out of the ordinary. Right. You have to listen to what they're saying. You know, you got to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to provide, again, like I said, good content, you know, good exercises, good form. And when you're providing that value, the social proof will catch up. Yeah. You know, and uh, sometimes a, a mistake that I see some people doing is, Maybe some people have maybe two, three, four, maybe 10, 20,000 followers. But the thing is, uh, one thing that I do notice is they don't even engage with uh, some of their users. Right. You know, they start commenting on their photos, liking it and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But they don't even engage. You know, they don't even talk to them. Engagement's super important, yeah. man. It's social media. Yeah. It's it's very important. you got to be using that. Yeah. Like That's... you're supposed to be engaging with them. That's the whole purpose of social media. It's social media. And, you know, you see the people who set themselves apart mm -hmm. are the ones who are constantly interacting with their fans, no matter how mm -hmm. famous they are. One person I think who's like the king of this is The Rock. Oh, like, The Rock is amazing. No matter how, like, this guy's probably got the busiest fucking schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, he wakes up at what, like 4.30 a.m., gets his workout done, eats some pancakes, whatever. You see it all. And all the while, he's posting stories. Hey, I'm meeting with a fan today. This is my buddy. Blah, blah, blah. Like, he's out here, like, delivering value. You say delivering. He mm -hmm. is fucking 
you know what shipping Sharma? that value to your front door every single that's, day that's yeah. actually a great example i have another great example okay i recently just got this book it's called millionaire success habits okay what's even interesting about this i actually decided to post it on my story mm-hmm. and i decided to tag dean graziosi who's the author of this book okay no way he took the time out of his day even though he has hundreds and thousands of followers he personally messaged me and he said bam how do you like it Ooh, do you, do you get what i mean he you messaged know, you he because messaged you posted me. the story yes, you know ah, how that made me feel yeah you know he really that's cares. validation he man really cares about his customers yeah 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 and dude that, to me that's more yeah. important than that's like the modern autograph exactly he gave you an autograph but more it's like here's yeah. dialogue it's like yo tell me what you like yeah, about my tell book. me what you think you know That's how do you like sick. it so he really cares about me and for me that made me feel special okay i like that do you get lot. what i mean yeah, yeah, so yeah, this is sure. this is me talking about people don't even engage yeah. with their audience they mm-hmm. just they're just posting content but do they yeah, actually yeah, yeah. care about their it's audience? like one-sided yeah. conversation it's mm-hmm. like you're just talking to the a bit like you don't really have a conversation like it's a book but Here's the thing, like, it takes time. It's like a job mm-hmm. responding to these people. It's like responding to emails. Like, you ever get so many emails that you're, like, overwhelmed? Like, man, like, I don't even have time to respond to these things. And I, we're not even, like, we're not, like, even famous or anything. Like, yeah. how do you think he has time? Do you think he, do you think it's even really personally him? Or do you think he has a handler? Like, you think of how many people probably post his book, you know? It's like, do you think he really takes the time to individually respond to every person? You know what? Every I, comment, I, every like. like. I'm going to be very straightforward. I think uh, everyone has time to do everything. No matter how busy you are, okay. it's where your mind is. It's what you value most. Right. It's what you, and I genuinely think the type of person he is, he will take the time out of his day to just engage with his uh, his his customers. That's awesome, And that's man. us. And if... A good example of this is uh, I follow Gary V. Right. I remember there's... Shout out to Gary yeah, V, man. Gary v. Big inspiration. <laughs> and uh, Gary V, he talks about, you know, before he made it big, you know, he would spend hours in a day just tweeting back people. Yeah. You know, he replied back to every single tweet. This is before... Negative went, or positive? Yeah, negative or positive. Damn, he just replied okay. back to every single tweet. And he'd sometimes be up to like 2, 3 in the morning uh-huh. just replying back to every single tweet. That's ham. And look where he is now. You figured it out though, man. Yeah. He really cracked the code on like not only just engagement, but deli- constantly delivering content that pe- mm-hmm. not pe- not only that people need, but like it's stuff people don't want to hear. Mm-hmm. Like me, I even like sometimes get tired of it. It's like, it's like you'll see this fucking guy pop up on your feed like, why aren't you doing what you love, man? Mm-hmm. Just go fucking do it. It's like, man, this guy Gary Vee doesn't understand. He doesn't have to work a like a normal ass job, you know. He doesn't have to fucking, you know. Cut. But he could have easily gone down the that simple safe path of just accepting the you know path of least resistance, you know. But he always went against the grain, dude. This guy was like, didn't he make fucking videos of him tasting wine or some bullshit for uh-huh. like? That's when YouTube was like new. Like, have you seen those videos? He looks so know, bunk. I know exactly what you're talking about. When, uh, wine library something. Yeah, wine library. Yeah. When he first started off. That's gangster, man. Um, He's a true OG. <laughs> I, I think he took over his uh, father's wine business. Right, and right. And I think what he started doing was he started leveraging YouTube. And he started giving probably reviews or ratings on every type of wine there was possible. Oh, yeah. And he just provided constant amount of content content yeah. content to the point where he grew wine library or whatever it was yeah. to like a million dollar business yeah. which is incredible yeah exactly from youtube like, from, from youtube shit, man. that's that's crazy he figured it out early yeah. man like uh wasn't he like an early investor in twitter or something like that Uber you know what? He's, he's, like he's an he's, early investor a lot of things i think uh one of my favorite like, stories have that nose man i think my favorite story of uh, gary v is I think he was offered uh, some uh, an equity stake in Uber when it first came out. And what's even funnier about that story is it's kind of like maybe you and me. Like, imagine you being my good friend and I say, hey, Sharma, I'm building an app. And maybe at that time you were in a financial position where you have an abundance amount of money where you can easily invest. 
you know, millions of dollars. You can easily write a check and be like, hey, take this. Yeah. So that being said, it's like me coming to you with like, hey, listen, Sharma, I have I have a great idea. It's called Uber. It's going to do this and this. Are you interested? And you said, <laughs> you then write me the check. <laughs> and imagine we had a close enough relationship. And to this day, he uses that as a good example because he says he pretty much like, He's so happy because he got slapped in the face. You know, right. he got offered that, I think, maybe two times to buy into that company. If he would have bought in at that time, it would have been worth maybe a couple hundred millions, if not billions of dollars. You That's know, insane. if he would have just bought in into the early stages when it yeah. was first coming out. And imagine that was his really close friend that was inventing it. And he had the money to invest into that business. And he still, even though that's his friend, he still did not put money down. So for him, he uses that as motivation and you know, that shows, you know, like sometimes, you know, you're not always going to invest into like uh, your yeah. friend's ideas and whatnot, but then he uses that to kind of motivate him, you know? Right. He's, he's, he's very grateful that that happened to him. Right. And that's what I really like about that story. So getting back to that book, mm -hmm. um, tell me about it. Like, what are you liking about it so far? I know you just got it mm -hmm. uh, for your birthday. Mm -hmm. You're mentioning that to me earlier. Mm-hmm. Tell me some key takeaways. What are you What are you enjoying about it? Like, honestly, do you uh, recommend it to people? Right now, uh, I'm probably maybe about two or three chapters deep, and so far, it's pretty powerful. Uh, I think the core principle of this book is replacing old habits with new habits. Right. Uh, or old habits with yeah yeah sorry yeah yeah so replacing old habits with new habits. It's a big one. Yeah. And one of the most important ones that he talks about, which is going to be the fundamentals, is basically finding your why. Basically, okay. why do you choose to do this or that or this? So basically, we as human beings, we have a bunch of layers built up. So if I were to say, Sharma, why are you doing podcasts? Mm -hmm. Right away, you have kind of like a reflex. Oh, I'm doing podcasts for this reason. Yeah. You already have it. You're just speaking from your head. Right. You know, but... If you go seven layers deep and I keep asking you, why do you do this? Yeah. Why do you do this? And I keep going. By the time you get to the seventh level and I ask you why, that might be your real reason as to why. And you're no longer yeah. speaking from your reflexes okay. or you're ba pretty much speaking right from your heart and your soul. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like when a, a, a kid asks you, but why, but why, but mm -hmm. why? And you just yeah. keep going and like, even as an adult, you're like, man, you know what? Why though? Like, mm -hmm. you go deeper and deeper and deeper, and yeah. uh, I think that's very powerful shit because you can use that to kind of fuel you through harder times, right? Yeah, because like, uh, things aren't always gonna be like going smoothly and whatnot. Like, exactly, and like the the core purpose of this chapter is the reason you want to find your why is because if you don't identify what your real why is. There's going to be times you're going through a really hard time. You're going to be going through a tremendous amount of adversity and challenges, mm -hmm. you know, and troubles. And if you don't have your true why figured out, you're, you're more easily likely to just give up and quit. Right. But then if you realize what your true why is, exactly why you're doing it, that is going to be the difference between you quitting and you continuing to push towards your goals. And that's why it's very important. And that's one of the key foundations of one of these uh, millionaire success habits. And that's why it's called seven layers deep because you get down to like, right. if it I were to say, off superficial, yeah. right? Yeah. Like if, if someone was to just give me this book and say, or if the reason I have this book is because I was interested in it. And if someone were to say, why are you reading this book? I would say, because I want to reach financial uh, independence or financial freedom but that's just me talking but then as i get deeper and deeper and deeper it's you like know, why do you want yeah, financial why freedom why do you exactly yeah, yeah. and as you keep going down you know uh it's going to get to a point where you might get so emotional you might get tears in your eyes mm -hmm. because you're going to find your real why right. the real reason the real root of why you're doing exactly what you're doing and once you get to that point you'll realize that there's like literally nothing that can stop you yeah you'll be super focused and man, anytime that's a, you, that's a great way yeah. to stay centered yeah and like have a vision and a mission that like hey man this doesn't fit my overall goal what i want to achieve mm -hmm. so i'm not gonna fucking do it 
Yeah, exactly. Like this can keep you on path in tough times when you're tempted to do not just tough paths. Like honestly, when you get distracted, mm-hmm. you're gonna have a lot of noise that comes around you. Yeah. You're gonna have friends, families. Hey, let's go do this. Let's go do that. Yeah. But uh, imagine you you start thinking about why. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. It puts you back on route to where you need to be. That's you're gonna, shit, you're gonna stop wasting more time and stuff like that. You're gonna start focusing on your why. Why did I start doing? Uh, exactly what I'm doing to get to where I want to be is because of this. Right. And in order for me, it's going to push away the noise. And that's what's going to start happening once you figure out your why, you know, and that's what the seven layers deep is supposed to do. Right. And that's why for me, I'm just getting into it. Uh, hopefully in the next uh, week or two, I'm going to be able to practice this, not just on myself, right. with a few friends of mine. And I want to, I want to be able to get just as emotional because when I was reading uh, why he, when, uh, when he reached his seven layers of deep, someone else actually uh, presented the question to him and he never knew what it was. And right. someone did the the experiment on him. And by the time he got to his fifth or sixth why, he was very emotional. He wasn't even able to stand or sit up right anymore. You know, he had tears running down his eyes and then he got super emotional. But then eventually he found his true why. Right. And even when I was reading it, I was getting emotional Damn. because some of the things that he talked about, it really hit me because it resonated with my why. You know, I don't know if I found my wife, so that's why I look forward to uh, digging deep, yeah, man. Digging Figuring deep, out. exactly. That's dope. I mean, it's crazy that you're finding all this. You know, even in the first chapter, I'm excited to see, mm-hmm. like, you know, once you're done this book, yeah. how much it changes your perspective on things. Mm-hmm. Um, I I've always uh, enjoyed these these kinds of books. Uh, I, the Power of Habit was one that I I really enjoyed as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I just picked up the High Performance Habits book. Um, I'm enjoying that so far. Um, but, you know, th- a lot of these like like self-improvement, self-help kind of books kind of tie into the same theme. And uh, a lot of them kind of repeat some of the same same principles. But habits are everything, man. Habits are our lives. Like mm-hmm. we, we don't even realize it, but 95% of the things we do are just like habits, like the route we take to work. Uh, you light up a cigarette at this certain time every day. You eat pop tarts for breakfast on Saturday. Like I don't know. Everyone has some kind of like habit, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, rewiring your brain to be able to change those habits—it's not an easy task. Like mm-hmm. we've all gone on like you know a quick diet or something to try to lose some weight, mm-hmm. and you think you know I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut out sugar, I'm gonna cut out alcohol. You know I'm not gonna eat any bread. I'm just going to eat salads and kale shakes and, yo, I'm just going to be healthy as fuck Mm -hmm. and just, like, get shredded. And you might last, like, maybe three days, four days, something like that before you're back on the pizza and, like, you know, because you can't can't make these radical changes to your habits and expect them to stick. I'm amazed when I hear people going cold turkey on something, like, Mm -hmm. oh, I woke up one day and I just stopped doing this thing. Like, what'd you replace it with? Like, I find it interesting, like, people with vaping, right? Yeah. Like, vaping as opposed to smoking a cigarette. It's, like, arguably healthier than a cigarette. Yeah. And it's kind of, like, replacing the same motion. You're kind of getting the same hit, you know? There we go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it, It's interesting, man, like, how... Like the psychology of it. I I don't know much you know, about it, but it's interesting. Exactly what you're talking about here. Uh, I remember I was uh, talking to one of my cousins, Santino, and he told me that he quit drinking. Uh, he quit drinking. Yeah. And I asked him, like, how did you do it? You know, because it's not that easy. And he told me, you know, he started changing some of the habits. So he told me that whenever he's in a social environment, uh, most people will have, say, a drink in their hand or a cup in their hand. Oh, yeah. And when you put the action into it, it's the action of having a sip of something consistently. Yeah. So what he did was he replaced the alcoholic beverage with maybe a Red Bull or maybe a cup, but with maybe juice in it. Okay. But Just something to drink. Exactly. So the action is he's still sipping on something. He just replaced what it was. He replaced the product. So he's still having the same conversation as everyone else. Nobody knows the difference. Uh Uh-huh. And, you know, it worked for him. And to me, that made me realize, I'm like, oh, that's pretty powerful. That's powerful, man. Yeah. He, he replaced uh, 
he replaced the habit. Like he he still had the same cue to drink. Yeah. You see, you're not going to take yeah. away the social you, you, situation. When you're in a social setting, you don't realize yeah. that you're actually just constantly taking a sip out of something. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. You're not, you're not even thinking about no, it. No, you're not. We, we've practiced it so much. Oh, we've yeah. done it so much. Now it's like a reflex. Oh, man. Uh, there's been so many times I've been at the bar when it's like I don't have a drink in my hand. and you I feel th- awkward. I, I feel fucking weird, man. Yeah. I'm like, let me go get a drink. Yeah. I go get a drink. Maybe I drank it too quick. Now I'm like, fuck, I don't even need another drink, mm-hmm. but I'm going to get another exactly. drink. Exactly. Just because I have to hold something. <laughs> exactly. You just want to hold something. And, <laughs> yeah. that, and that's, that's I, I guess that's where the action is. It's just the action. Think of how much fucking money they made off yeah. us just because of that. That's mad. That's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. Habits. Habits are everything. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's cool about this, we kind of just briefly talked about how the subconscious mind kind of works. Yeah. Technically, the subconscious mind is just. We don't even know we're aware of it, but we're constantly taking a sip out of something. Uh, one of my most uh, favorite things that I've learned is how the conscious mind works and how the subconscious mind works. Uh-huh. And I didn't dig deep, deep into it, but I got you know a little brief taste of it. And I think the don't person, worry, bro, it's not uh, that deep. <laughs> <laughs> I think the person that I really enjoyed uh, listening to is I think his name was Doctor Bruce uh, Lipton or something like that. Okay, and he basically talks about how the subconscious mind works. Mm-hmm. So. A good example is he looked, I think it was a case study, and he looked at a group of kids. And I don't have the exact statistics or the data, but I'll give you a a summary of how I would be able to explain it. Right. If he took, say, 30 kids, you know, and maybe the first group of kids, or maybe 30 kids, and we'll say 15. The first 15 kids grew up in a very poor family. Okay, they were raised by poor parents. Yep. And then the other 15 kids were raised uh, by parents who were very wealthy. Okay. Now, long story short, you look at them where they are, maybe when they're 30, 40. What does the data show? The data shows that the kids that grew up in a wealthy family were more likely to succeed. They had better jobs, better income, better, just more success in life when really? compared to where you looked at the people where. Uh, they grew up in a poor environment. And that's where I started to learn how kind of the subconscious mind. So uh, basically, between the age of zero to seven years old, uh, a kid's mind has not fully developed. That's when you're actually training the subconscious mind. So from the ages from zero to seven, the way you raise your child yeah. is basically like a program. And whatever you teach them, the type of things you teach him between this age group, he's basically going to take this program and he's going to use it for the rest of his life. Damn. Okay? So, long story short. That's pretty true, though. Yeah. So, if, if you think about it for a second, when these kids, say uh, we have Tommy over here, okay? Tommy, you know, he grew up in a rich family and he was a complete fuck-up, okay? He... You know, all the way up till 25, 30 years old. He doesn't have his life together. But because he had successful parents, when he did decide to change his life around and switch it for the better, he ended up being successful. Whereas when you compared it to maybe David, who grew up with poor parents and were taught poor habits, Mm -hmm. you know, poor routines. Right. You know, and even though he tried his best to change his circumstances. He was set up for failure before. Because that's the program he's operating. Yeah. uh, So... That makes you come back to it. There's people here right now that grew up with poor habits. They're operating on an old, old system. Right now, we're operating, you know, on a very different platform. And we're always constantly adapting. We're getting new programs out. So technically, once you pass the age of seven, there's technically only two ways to train your subconscious mind. And if I remember it right, I think it was uh, repetition. And I forgot what the other one was. Repetition, repetition, and maybe practice. Okay. Okay. Uh, so a technique that I started using was uh, affirmations. Okay. So basically, uh, as soon as you go to bed, technically, as soon as you fall asleep, you go into your subconscious mind. I so just Google it real quick, and it's like mm-hmm. law of attraction. Is that because that is that it? Uh, no, is that that's different. What did you type in? I just try to type two ways to train subconscious mind. No, law of attraction is... Uh, That's a different one, uh, right? Well, no, it's it's still te- technically that, but uh, I'll give you an example. When, 
pretend you're driving, okay? Mm-hmm. Pretend you're driving home today from work and maybe you get a phone call. Right. Okay? You're driving home, you're getting a phone call, you're having a deep conversation, boom, next thing you know, you arrive at home and then you realize, what the hell? I don't remember passing those set of lights. I don't remember taking that right turn. Right. How did I get here? And that's the subconscious mind because the subconscious mind knows exactly how to take you home even okay. when you're not aware of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And that's the subconscious mind. Okay. You know, because you've done it so many times it's that you've repetition. trained, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. repetition. You train the subconscious mind. Right, right. So, and that's the, uh, that's the program you have. Mm-hmm. So, yes, you could change it, but you got to do repetition. So right. You, through content, uh, through constant training and practice, you'll yeah. be able to get that repetition and you can train your subconscious mind. And if you think about that, that's why you'll see a lot of successful people that use affirmations. Uh And as soon as you fall asleep, technically, you go into your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So even though you might have an old program, you know, you can uh, find things like on YouTube. Uh, I usually use YouTube, you know, and they use I am affirmations, you know. I am gifted, I'm guided, I'm grateful, I'm blessed, I'm humble. You know, and then I'm always constantly, it's constantly until I start believing in it, you know. I'll start believing in it, you know. And that's cool. You'll start memorizing some of these affirmations, and then you'll once that it'll start to consume. Maybe you're not the most uh, happy person. Maybe you're sad or depressed. Mm-hmm. But through constant repetition, if you're constantly saying, "I am happy," "I am happy," mm-hmm. "I am happy," "I am happy," it's like a long-term plan. It will kick in. It's not going to kick in tomorrow, right? Or two days later, three days. It's constant repetition, and finally, I, I, I don't know. Might. I don't know how I feel about like mm-hmm. the whole listening to. Mm -hmm. shit in my sleep and that's gonna make me more positive Mm -hmm. i don't know how i feel about that i'm gonna have to look into it myself but you know you have to experiment but what i do know for sure is repetition it i guess it gets like imprinted into our like hard drive while we sleep Mm -hmm. like there's been studies done that have proven this that let's say i don't know let's say just shooting a basketball for example Mm -hmm. let's say you shoot a basketball you suck you have no experience day one day zero you can't shoot in the net you do 10 today maybe you get one in and tomorrow you go do you know 10 again maybe you get two three but then you increase the reps you keep doing more you keep practicing you keep training in your sleep they've they've mapped out the pattern of you shooting a basketball like it's like duh, 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 duh. It's, it, it goes super fucking quick and your brain's like actually learning how to shoot the basketball while you're sleeping so that tomorrow when you go do it your muscle memories i don't i don't know the science behind it but you can shoot the basketball better so that's why like it's so important. Like people are always saying, get your eight hours of sleep, rest, sleep. Mm-hmm. Everyone just ignores it. Like no one really. You know, I'm happy you brought that topic up, and uh, I also talk, I guess, uh, about the power of visuali- visualization. Oh, that's just powerful, okay. man. Uh, I used to think it's bullshit. I uh, I'll talk about basketball because you brought that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they had there was a, a science experiment. I can't exactly remember what it was, and I don't remember where I heard it. But there was a science experiment or just an experiment in general. They took three groups of kids, you know, group A, B, and C. So they told group A, listen, for the next 30 days, you're going to, you're going to, all you're going to do, you're going to come one time, once a week, and you're going to practice for one hour. Okay. Okay. Or every day for for the next, uh, every day for the next uh, one month, you're going to come here for, for 30 days, one hour a day, and you're going to practice shooting hoops. Okay. Then we went to group B. And group B, they told this group, they said, listen, every day you're going to come here, and for the next one day, you're not going to do nothing. Mm-hmm. That was a control test. And then okay. they went to group C. And they basically gave them the ball, and they said, listen, you're not allowed to shoot in the hoop, but for the next one hour, every day for the next 30 days, you're going to visualize this ball going in through the hoop. And you're just going to visualize this. And you're going to practice every day for the next 30 days for one <laughs> hour a day. But they can't actually shoot. They're not allowed to shoot. But you're going to visualize the ball going. Okay. Okay. So they did the control test at the very beginning. They saw the results. Okay. 30 days later, um, they did the test. So they looked at group B. Group B did exactly what you would think. Yeah. They did nothing. They improved nothing. <laughs> okay. So we go to group A. And they looked at how much they improved. 
and they saw there was a 50% improvement because they practice every day. Right. Now, when you go to group C, they also saw there was also a 50% improvement. No way. Just as much as group so A. So imagine you combine A and all they C. did was visual. Exactly. Damn. What do you get? Like 75%, man. Yeah. That's insane. That's crazy. No, it's true, man. Like, uh, I've seen it in my experience playing sports. Like, you picture what you're going to do the night before a game. That might not be as powerful, but you kind of have an idea. Okay, I'm going to go intercept this ball, and I'm going to go run it back for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to do. I see myself doing it, stepping in front of the football, uh, in, in front of a def uh offensive player or something mm -hmm. catching it in my like i feel it in my hands and i'm gonna go run it back mm -hmm. like you you picture that in in your head and you almost believe it like ah, I, psh, i've done it i'll do it again mm -hmm. um and then when the game time comes like you can't just forget about that and then let oh yeah look at these guys like i'm fucked like you, you still have to keep that shit like replaying in your brain and then I'm not saying you're going to manifest a play just by thinking about it, but by almost preparing your mind for the scenario that it can happen, when the opportunity presents itself, you'll be more ready than someone who might not have thought about it at all. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it, it's it's all about, like, split second reactions and stuff right so mm -hmm. it's very interesting man visualization and stuff i used to think it's complete garbage like mm -hmm. you're fucking you're gonna tell me to just think shit into existence like are you dumb like mm -hmm. makes no sense at all but you know it's obviously not black and white like some books and some things some people might try to sell you but there's something powerful about it some of the most successful athletes of all time claim visualization is one of the most important um, parts of their journey. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's why people use like vision boards and stuff too, right? Like I've, I've never really used one, but I've heard, I've heard people using like a vision board, like, like, a. I guess it's like goals and you visualize yourself actually. I, I guess it's similar to uh, writing down your goals. Right. I use it kind of similar to, uh, law of attraction uh-huh i mean um i think there was a story about some guy he wrote down everything that he wanted within the next 10 years every every single thing whether it was monetary gains like cars and stuff like that to everything he wanted and he wrote it down and he put it away in a box and i think he came across this box maybe like 20 years later he completely forgot about it and then when he pulled it out he started going through his notes and he's like oh my god you know I've accomplished maybe over 80% of it. So he technically planted the seed yeah. and he even wrote down the type of dream house that he visualized, you know, what type of house that he lived in, what type of features it had. I'm a hundred percent believer and, in that, uh, man. When he started going through his notes. If he, you're realistic yeah. about it and like, you know, these are goals that like are attainable in mm -hmm. one way or another, like you can achieve this. If you write them down, and, you know, that's not to just say, like, yo, I, I want a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a Ferrari. Like, you have to be kind of specific about it mm -hmm. and how you're going to get it mm -hmm. and what you're going to do to get it, what steps you're going to take to get it, when am yeah. I going to get it, all that kind of stuff. But if you're, if you write it down, I feel like the odds of you actually getting it go up so much higher as opposed to just thinking, like, yeah, I'm going to get a Ferrari. Something about writing things down, like for I think me, that's honestly the hardest thing to do. Just write things down, it's and huge. I think people neglect that. Yeah. And uh, the action of you actually writing yeah. thing, you know, the commitment it takes just to write, you know, even simple notes. You like, know, what those people yeah. are missing out on is that fucking satisfying feeling. You ever have a to do list mm -hmm. and you've like cross shit off, mm -hmm. like you find a list like some time later, you're like, I did all this shit. Like, I got it all done. Fucking best feeling ever, man. There's also <laughs> the bad side. There's uh, sometimes I get into a bad habit where I'm really good at building a list and, then and it never gets done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's, I mean, yeah. that's the other side of the coin, right? Yeah. You're not going to be perfect. Yeah. But yeah. At least 
you knew about the stuff on the list. Yeah. And yeah. eventually you'll get it done. Yeah. That's sick. That I agree. All right, Mr. Sharma. I got to get going. Yeah, man. Thank you for uh, coming on the podcast. It's um, a real honor to have you on, man. And definitely do this again. 100% I will be back here. Just Thank you remember, again. It's, uh, it's not that deep, bro. All right. It's Take not care. that deep. <laughs>